Good afternoon. I'm Joel Franklin. Welcome to today's JLG webcast, Spring Books for Elementary Readers. We welcome back Betty Ann Wells, one of our JLG book talkers. Though everyone is busy guessing about the announcement of the ALA Youth Media Awards, at Junior Library Guild, we are moving ahead to 2018. Our editorial team is hard at work reading manuscripts of forthcoming titles, and today we are delighted to give you a sneak preview of upcoming selections for our elementary readers. And you can join the conversation on Twitter. You can tweet us at JR Library Guild and use the hashtag JLG Webcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can send those in at any time via the Q&A box. And you can download your handout of featured titles from the Resources folder. Are you a Junior Library Guild member? And would you like to know more about it? Stay tuned after the webcast for a short chat about the value of adding JLG to your collection development program. If you have any questions, we are happy to answer them. Selecting books at the beginning of the season must be like choosing your favorite child. There are just so many wonderful choices. So Deb, how could you begin to narrow it down to just 12 for this 30-minute program? It may not be as painful as selecting my favorite books for the year, but it's also a really good problem to have. So many books, so many good choices, and one of my favorite people is back. Here we have our first book for our webcast today, The Problem Children, by one of our favorites, Natalie Lloyd. She's the author of Snicker of Magic, which is a book that every time I hold it, I hold it to my chest because I loved that book. And you will love The Problem Children. The prolo prologue begins like this. Once upon a Wednesday, many years ago, a small boy made a brave decision. Somewhere in the deep woods of the Carolinas, he ran breathless. The, boy's, the brave boy's heart never steadied until he reached the top of the cold rock hill. His sister waited for him there, and he flung his arms around her waist and hugged her tight. She motioned the rest of the siblings out from the cave where they'd been hiding. She pushed the boy an arm's length away and stared deep into his eyes. Are you sure about this, she asked. The little boy nodded. We hide it, and we don't tell anybody about it no matter what. Oh my goodness, Deb, you immediately, I want to know what they're hiding. I want to know what they're hiding too. And so we have seven kids, one for every day. Monday's child is fair of faith. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Thursday's child has far to go and you'll love her so much. Um, Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child works hard for a living. But the child who's born on the Sabbath day is good and wise in every way. And so we have a story of seven kids who seem like orphans, but they have exploring parents. And so kind of like some of the other books that just hook you in with a little bit of magic and a secret to tell and um, problems for these problems, with an eye children, mm -hmm. they will just love this book. And I talked to Natalie, and it's the first in a series. Oh, I love series. Woot, woot, woot. Yes. jump in yes, from yes, the yes. beginning. I love series. Yep. Um, I read a book uh, called El Chupacabra. Um, this is one of our primary Spanish books, Deb. This book is wonderful. I like it because it's set up to where it's easy to learn the language separately. There will be two sentences, half of the first sentence is in English and the back half is in Spanish, and then the next sentence, the first half will be in Spanish and the back half is in English. So you have to be paying attention. You do, and it's, it, I, this is the easiest way to learn a, a Spanish, I think. I took one and two when I was in the high school, and I wish we'd have learned it this way. Ah. But anyway, I've heard of the Chupacabra myth many, many times, but this Chupacabra is it's the goat sucker. That's exactly what I'll keep the cop of me, which sounds kind of nasty. Um, but Hector is a goat farmer. He loves his goats, and one morning he comes out and he finds that one of his goats is missing. And when they find the goat, it's a goat pancake. And that's when they know the El Chupacabra. Ah. Is now, the Chup El Chupacabra is supposed to be the myth, the legend. He's supposed to be a terrifying, blood-sucking beast. But actually, he's a tiny little gentleman. He wears a bow tie and a monocle, and he drinks hot chocolate and eats churros. So this is an awesome book 
for the story. The illustrations are adorable, and I would think any one, even if you're not wanting to learn a second language, would want to read this book. It's adorable. It was adorable and hilarious, too. Mm -hmm. um, and great for multicultural um, stories. Yeah, folk exactly, tales. yes. So picking back up in uh, 2018, where 2017 left off, we had a pretty good year for folk, uh, folk tales, so yay for this one. Here we have Nevermore, one of the first books from 2018 that I read, debut novel, and the first of She's Anticipating Three for this series, okay. Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow. The journalist arrived before the coffin did. They gathered at the gate overnight, and by dawn, they were a crowd. By 9 o'clock, they were a swarm. It was near midday before Corvus Crow made the long walk from his front door to the tall iron rails, keeping them at bay. Chancellor Crow, will this affect your plans to run for re-election? Chancellor Crow, how soon will the burial place be? Has the president offered condolences? How relieved do you feel this morning, Chancellor? Please, Corvus interrupted. Please, I wish to read a statement on behalf of my family. We wish to thank you, the citizens of our great republic, for your support over the past 11 years. This has been a trying time for our family, and the distress will no doubt linger for some time yet. The loss of a child is difficult to bear, not only for our family, but for the townspeople of Jackalfax, who, know we sh who we know share in our grief. But this morning, as we welcome the ninth age of the Winter Sea Republic, know that the worst is behind us. So what has happened, Betty Ann, and those of you listening, is this poor child, Morgan Crow was born on Eventide, which is the most unlucky day that you can be born. And so on your 12th birthday, it's expected that you will, wait for it, die. Bye. Yes. And so Morgan has spent her whole life, especially her 11th year, thinking that, okay, any time now, any time now, I'm going to be dead. And so they blame her for all these mishaps that happen in the city until, very much like Harry Potter, remember when Hagrid comes in and just scoops Harry yeah. away? Same thing happens to Morgan oh. Crow. We have um, a, a mystery benefactor uh, named Jupiter, and Jupiter comes in right at the last second and takes her away to another place where her life will never be the oh, same. Oh, so people think she is past, but she's not. Uh -huh. Oh, that'll be awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. As soon as you read Coffin, I got interested. Yep, <laughs> there you go. Um, a Tiptoeing Tiger. This is an adorable book, Deb. Um, everyone in the forest knew that tigers were sleek, silent, and totally terrifying. When a tiger prowled through the forest, everyone found other places to be. But no one took any notice of little tiger. He would jump, he would roar, he would tumble, but nobody was afraid of him. And his brother laughed, oh, little tiger, you're too small and clumsy to scare anyone. But you know what, little tiger said, I am not. <laughs> I'm sleek, I'm silent, and I'm totally terrifying. And his brother said, I don't think you can scare a single animal in the forest. He says, I can. And he said, I'll prove it. And he does prove it. And you'll be crack cracking up when you see something that Annie sees he has about. He tries to scare an elephant, a warthog. But what he ends up scaring will make you laugh, laugh, laugh. It's adorable. Adorable, yep. So, The Tiptoeing Tiger, by written and illustrated by Philippa Leathers and one of our pre-K group. Um, back up a notch to our kind of intermediate um, grade, we have the return, get ready everybody, for Judith Viors. Yes, mm -hmm. and Lulu is back. So, we had, Lulu was a spoiled, oh my goodness, terrible, terrible child. And uh, so, in this new one, we have Lulu is getting a sister. It made no sense to Lulu that her mom and dad were so happy about this baby. Why in the world would they need another child? And why would they want a girl when they've already got a girl, namely Lulu, who totally had this girl in the family thing covered? And wasn't her mom always hugging her and saying in the mushiest voice, you are the greatest treasure of my life? Then wasn't her father always hugging her and saying with this little sob in his voice, nothing on earth brings your mother and me more joy? Not to mention all those times her mother and dad had warned her or told her, our hearts are filled to the brim with love for you. 
So how come if their hearts are filled to the brim, there's room in their hearts for another child is what Lulu wants to know. And so what they decide is that Lulu is not um, exactly ready for a new sister. Maybe she should go to camp. Okay. So there's a camp for big sisters to be, and you get to practice on a little sister. And so she goes to camp, and she signed a little sister named Mitzi, who talks a mile a minute. So hello, I'm Mitzi. I'm eight. Well, practically eight, and I'm a twin, and my birthday, both of our birthdays is August 9th, and my favorite color is silver. My favorite song is, oh, somewhere over the rainbow, and my favorite movie is I Still Can't Decide. Um, And I love doing cartwheels and jumping rope and lots of other fun things like that, and you can just see Lulu is mm-hmm. just going, you have got to be kidding me. And this is jumping up and down like crazy full of yes. energy. Just tell me already. So, yes. It's Judith V. Orr's at her best, laughing out loud, The Return of Lulu. The Return of Lulu. The Return of Lulu. Um, I want to tell you about um, Frankenstein's, Ballenstein's, I'm sorry. Um, the Fright Club is returning. Uh, ah. And the same characters are with us again. Um, they're in their clubhouse trying to do whatever they do in their clubhouse. And Fran Kane Stein is over to the side and he's got some construction paper and he's making something and they're starting to wonder what Fran is making. Um, and so Fran is making something with pink paper. Pink paper. Pink paper. And Vladimir says, is it a mask with fangs? And they said, no, it's a pink nose. It's a big pink nose. But actually looks like a paper butt. <laughs> so they walk over and they look at the calendar and it's February 14th. It's Valentine's Day. Ah. So they start to decide that Fran is in love. Fran is in love. And he's making a Valentine. Ah. Well, what's being in love? What's what's love? Two people are in love. They feel mushy, mushy about each other, and they look goodly eye at each other and flap their eyelashes, and they kiss on the lips. <gasps> That's disgusting. Ooh. Ooh, says every second grader. Yeah. So Fran just decides he's going to go ahead and give his Valentine to his sweetheart, regardless of what they think. Regardless of what they think. And when he hands it to her, she says, "This looks like a pink butt." <laughs> this is a very, very cute, cute book. Awesome, awesome. So. Uh, Coming soon to your JLG subscription box um, is Valentine's. So we're about halfway through our program. So before we forget, it's time for you to download your certificate of attendance if you need that to put in your professional development folder. So go over to that um, certificate folder and download that while I talk about the next book, which actually shows up in two places. We have... Lola. Lola is a uh, another book from our primary Spanish selection uh, category, um, and we also have it in English in the multicultural elementary born. And since it's been a while since I did Spanish, and I do not want to massacre the language, I'll I'll, I'll refer to the English, English version. Yes. <laughs> so what happened in this story is that Lola. Uh, goes to a school where every kid that's at her school is from somewhere else. Okay, that's interesting. Everybody's from somewhere else. Hers was a school of faraway places. And kids are um, from the city, they're from villages, they're from deserts, they're from jungles. But Lola was from the island. And so one day her teacher says, "Uh, please draw a picture of the country you are originally from your first country, and bring it in tomorrow. And everybody gets really excited, you know. One's going to draw the pyramid. Somebody's going to draw a canal. Somebody's going to draw a mongoose. Um, But Lola was not excited. Why? She was not excited because when she came, when she left her island, she was a baby before she had any remembering. Okay. And how can she draw something if she doesn't remember even being there? And so... Brave girl that she is, she raises her hand. She says, mm, "What? I have a problem. My problem is I can't remember. I wasn't of remembering age. Um, it's before I started remembering things. What can I do?" And this tr- her teacher says, "Are there people around you who remember?" 
She says, yes, my whole neighborhood is from where I came from. They're always talking about her island. And so her teacher says, well, maybe. And before she can finish her sentence, Lola has got that idea. I'll ask the people in my neighborhood to tell me about where I came from. And so on her way home from school, she talks to her cousin, who tells her that what she remembers most are these bats, lots of giant bats, bats as big as blankets, and they used to chase after her at night. So Lola takes out her notebook, and she begins to sketch about these blanket bats. And so she goes to the neighborhood, and she talks to the street vendors about the music, and she talks about the food, and she talks about all kinds of things. So Lola has not only a picture of her where she came from, she has a whole book. I bet the teacher loved that. She did. We definitely had to stop, drop, and have show and tell at the end of the story. So your readers, whether they speak English or Spanish, they will love Lola. The, I love the color and Alan illustrations Horn. in that oh book. Oh, my gosh. Well, Deb. The illustrations are knocking yeah. your eyes out. Yeah. They're adorable. When um, she's drawn, when, she, when in her mind what she thinks those yes. blanket bat looks like. They are. It's adorable. It's beautiful. You could just sit and just look and look and look at all the cool illustrations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely a, a read aloud, a sit with your parent book, a um, if you have a document camera, you got to show that thing so everybody can see. Um, a similar audience maybe is our young ones who might like animals, mm -hmm. and they might like monsters, monsters, and they might like be read to. Yep. So tell us about this next read aloud monster video. And, monster and mouse go camping. Um, adorable. I never in my life thought a monster would be adorable, but this monster is just cute. Um, Mouse comes into Monster one day, and Monster's main thoughts, I think, is about eating. Monster always likes to be snacking and eating. Mm -hmm. um, and she's eating her lunch, and Mouse comes in and wants to know if she wants to go camping, and Monster says, well, what's that? What's camping? So she, Mouse says, it's being out in a tent, sleeping under the stars, and Monster had no desire to do that. Then Mouse says, well, there'll be lots of snacks. So monsters, so, all, monsters all for it. We're going to go camping. So they pack up, they get the sleeping bags, they get everything they need, and they go to go camping. And Mouse happens to wander off and leaves Monster to herself, which wasn't a good idea because she's getting hungry. And she looks in their wagon and she sniffs and she eats their lantern. Oh, dear. Deb. And as she's, they're going on and Mouse keeps wandering off, Monster keeps eating, eats sleeping bags, eats the tent. Oh, dear. Monster eats everything except for the box of food. And then when they get to the camping grounds, she apologizes to Mouse. Mouse says, that's all right. We've got the food. We can sleep on the ground under the stars. Mouse opens up the box of food. Monster, I'm sorry. I forgot the food. Oh, no. But they do get to take their camping trip, and they get to sleep in a tent, and they get to make s'mores. And the way they do that is adorable. You'll have to read this book. It's a surprise. It's if you very, want to know, yeah, you'll have to it's read It's definitely that not book. what I thought would end in that book, and it's really cute. Yeah, it's very cute. So um, you can see those of you um, who might be new to us. Um, is right now we have this slotted in the August selection, so this will be um, coming out later in the summer. Um, so expect that book to come kind of down the road. Yeah. But you'll be excited waiting for it because you'll say, hey, isn't this the book that they talked about? So here is um, my last picture book that I want to talk about today, Drawn Together by Men Lay uh, and Dan Santat. And I will tell you guys, you regular listeners, it has blue on the cover. You know what that means. You know what that means. For the last couple of years, it's meant you better have a tissue mm -hmm. close by. And I got about four pages, five, six, uh, uh, just a few pages in before I got, I had to get my tissue. This book is one of the most unusual books I've seen. It starts off as a wordless book, and then it goes into a bilingual book, and then it goes into a graphic novel uh, with words. It's, there's, I haven't seen anything like it, but it is the story of a boy and his grandfather, and he apparently they have this visit, and it's 
something that a little boy is not entirely looking forward to because he can't communicate with his grandfather. He doesn't speak um, his language. And so they go to watch TV. They don't watch the same kind of TV. Um, so both of them are kind of grumpy about the mm. whole visit until the little boy is, you know what, I'm done with this. So he gets up and he goes to his backpack and he pulls out his markers and his paper and he begins to draw. And suddenly we see the grandpa's face go, oh, because guess what? Grandpa likes to draw Grandpa too. likes to draw too. And um, right when I gave up on talking, my grandfather surprised me by reading, uh, revealing a world beyond words. And in a flash, we see each other for the first time. And I loved it. Oh, my gosh. It's just gorgeous. I bet poor Dan's hand was just cramped to pieces. But this is such a wonderful uh, combination of author and illustrator and drawing and language and overcoming barriers. Um, it, uh, I don't care what grade your kids are. Get this yeah, book, it's a cute book. And, and share it with them because it, it, it makes a really amazing point about how language and drawing and how... Um, how we communicate and how that communication can be different. Doesn't always have to be with words. Doesn't always have to be with words. It could be with music. Music. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. That's where we learned. That's all we learned. But there was more to that. There was the hugely woochly spider, too. <laughs> the hugely woochly spider. The hugely spider. woochly spider. And he tried to climb up the water spout, but he couldn't fit. But he learned how to save the spiders that were in the water spout trying to climb the water spout. He climbed up the water spout on the outside. And he saw it was going to rain. He warned him. He said, there's going to be rain. There's going to be storms. They're going to come. They're going to get you. They didn't believe him. And they climbed in the water spout and tried climbing up. He's on the outside. He climbs up and he blocks the hole so that the rain can't get them. And he saved the day. Saves the day. And the sun even agreed with him. When the sun came out and dried all the rain up, he agreed. Because the little itsy bitsy spiders didn't think it was true. But he got a gift from them for saving him. Leg warmers. Leg warm. Well, spiders have legs. They have lots of legs. Lots of legs. And that's what he, he was excited because he got all those leg warmers, and that's what he wanted was the leg warmers. So they kind of changed the song around to the Hugely Woogly Spider Save the Day. Hugely Woogly Spider Save the Day. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. It's a cute. It's a cute. It is cute. cute and you might pair it with last year's After the Fall. We don't have any more copies because it's sold out, but you probably have it already, After the Fall, which is what happens after life. Um, after Humpty Dumpty got mm -hmm. up. Yep. So it's the same That's kind of book too. idea. Yeah, very cute. So my last book is fantasy, science fiction for um, upper elementary, like grades three to six. And it's one of my favorite authors, uh, new authors, John David Anderson. And his first book, as you remember, many of you, is Ms. Bixby's Last Day, which was read. And I cried so hard in that book. I cried so hard. And then last year he had posted, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was an, another heartwarming book. So, so when I saw Granted and I saw it had a blue cover with a dog on the front, I was afraid. And I said to John David, I'm afraid. And he said, but it's, it's heartwarming, not heart-wrenching. Okay. But you will need a tissue. Okay. But it is the story of a grantor. You probably will, once you read this book, one, never wish the same again, and two, probably never throw out your birthday candles. Okay. I'll tell you why. Okay. The last time you blew out your birthday candles, what did you wish for? Did you blow them all out on the first breath? It doesn't count otherwise. Also, do not let your brother or sister help you. At best, they will waste your wish. At worst, they will steal it for themselves. In this story... We have the backstory of how wishes are granted. Everybody wishes on a star or a birthday candle or something like that, but your wishes are being heard. Your wishes are being heard by fairies 
who have different tasks, and one of them is to grant your wish. And it used to be that the fairies granted lots and lots of wishes, but now there's not so much magic in the world. Mm -hmm. And there are just a few wishes that get granted every day. And so in our story, we have Ophelia Delphinium Fidget. That's her name. I love it. I love her I name. I Fidget is the best. It is. And so um, she is going to grant her first wish. And so she's got to go out into the world and find the girl who wished for this bicycle and grant her wish. But what she learns is that it's not quite as easy as her training would have led her to believe. Mm -hmm. And granting wishes is harder than you think it might be. Yeah. So save your candles, put them where the fairies can get to them, okay. and maybe your wish will come true. Do you have well. to say your wish out loud? Not necessarily, but okay. you cannot tell. Yeah. It's a secret. Yeah, it's always been a secret. Yeah. And so you might pair this book with Barbara O'Connor's book, Wish. In that story, we have a fourth grader who every day wish for the same thing on all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And um, so I hope your wishes are granted, too. I like biographies, um, and I love To Kill a Mockingbird. Deb, this book, um, Alabama Spitfire, the story of Harper Lee and To Kill a Mockingbird, just brought a lot more light to me than what I knew about Harper Lee. Um, her and Truman Compote were very good friends. Yes, they were. Um, he would come and stay in his grandmother's during the summer, which was right next door to Harper Lee's and her family. Mm -hmm. But as I was reading this book about Harper Lee and her lifestyle, how she didn't like girly, girly stuff, and I saw Scout. And when she was walking across on the other side of the road with her father going to the courthouse, and the other people having to walk on the opposite side of the road, I kept seeing To Kill a Mockingbird. And her life was so put into that book. Um, we also have the book True and Nell, which is one of our independent readers. And as for our members, it's marked down to $9. That is a longer version of the story of Harper Lee um, and how she came to write To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, it was her biggest book she ever wrote. Her and Truman Capote would write little books and stuff together when they were younger. Right. Um, but this book, which is, I just saw To Kill a Mockingbird more and more as I was reading this book about her, and it was very awesome. Well illustrated. Um, good storyline. Yeah, it was. So this is just a little bit, a little taste, mm -hmm. what's coming in the next few months, six months, um, in our spring span for elementary. Um, if you want to know more about hot new books and what's going on in our industry, remember to check out our sister magazine, School Library Journal and Hornbook. And remember that JLG customers receive discounts. Talk to your account rep for more details. Who will bring home the gold and silver for 2017? Mark your calendar for February the 8th, 3 o'clock Eastern, for award-winning books and what to do with them. This free 30-minute webcast will show you the online resources that you can use after you hear the announcements, which will be the following Monday. Um, so this webcast is appropriate for school and public librarians and all educators because these will be free online resources that you can use to teach these amazing award-winning books. Um, so it will go all the way from pre-K to 12. And if you can't come, be sure that you register because we'll send you a link to the video archive after the event. Um, and are you a JLG member? Would you like to know more about it? Stay tuned after the webcast for a short chat about the value of adding JLG to your collection development program. If you have questions, we are happy to answer them for you. And if you need credit for attending today's webcast, now is a great time to go ahead and click on the certificate folder and you can print your certificate of attendance. You'll also want to download the handout which lists today's featured titles. Thanks again to Betty Ann for spending some time with us. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. And thanks to you, our listeners, for supporting these authors and illustrators with your time. After the webcast, you'll receive a short survey. So thanks again for making the time to give us some feedback. Until next time, thanks again for joining us, and happy reading. And we're going to start the post-show chat. And maybe you're not a member of JLG and you'd like to know more about how uh, JLG works. Today, Betty Ann and Deb will fill you in. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. You can post them in the Q&A box, and we'll be happy to answer them.
So I've been working at JLG for five years, but Betty Ann and those of you listening, I was also, before I got here, I was a JLG member. Mm -hmm. I was a little slow to the party, and my biggest thing about JLG was, why did I wait so long? Um, It started in 1929 um, as a Boys and Girls Club for Young Readers, we have only four categories, and we've grown to a company with over 23,000 customers Mm -hmm. and 75 categories for our members to choose from. And so I tell you what, as a librarian, it's one of the best bangs you'll get for your buck. You'll get um, hot new books every month, books that you would probably purchase anyway, but lots of books that our editors are are looking for finding debut authors, smaller publishers, um, that you're going to go, oh, I didn't know about that book. And you will know because you already have them. So, Betty Ann, tell our listeners, how how does it work? If I wanted, I want this, what this is, how do I get it? Well, we work real close with the librarians to find out what your needs are for your readers. And we decide with you what categories you want to get. And then you get books every month from each category. Um, that you pick out. Nice thing about it, though, Deb, is that you have access to always see what books are coming out to you, do the reviews, which are done through Library Journal and Hornbook, and if that book for any reason whatsoever is not going to work for you, you can swap it out for any other book we have. You always have a final say on what comes to your library. Um, we're making suggestions to you. Uh, and a lot of our librarians start out, um, when they first start out, they do some swaps and stuff, but then they find out that they they rely on us. They let us do the selecting for us because 95% of our books become award winners. Yes, they do. And that's what they're wanting in their libraries. Yeah. Just the other day I did a webcast for Dallas ISD. The 40 top books that get the, they have, so they have gotten the most journal best list, and of the 40 books, only five weren't JLG selections. Mm-hmm. Only five. Right. So there you go. There's your your percentage rates right there. So, um, so what you do is you choose your category, and the categ- the books are sorted by genre and interest level. Right. So, say a librarian um, decides, oh, I need some more nonfiction. So, there's a category for elementary, middle, and high in nonfiction, mm-hmm. or for biography, or I need books for my intermediate readers, or I need fantasy. A lot of times, people pick books um, based on I really just don't love that category. But I know my kids do. Right. Um, So that's a great benefit. Also, because our editors are so amazing and they read everything that they select, they look for potentially sensitive material. So Mm -hmm. for those of you who are trying to read everything that you put in your collection, we beat you to it. And um, on our website, you'll see as a member the potentially sensitive areas. And it's the only company that does that. It is. And we just started doing that maybe six months ago. No, no, no. We've been doing that for a long time. Oh, have we? Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a great benefit. Um, Also, it's the only company that reduces the price of the book. Mm -hmm. And so Betty Ann mentioned that – the nail and true and nail true and nail are is down to nine dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have online sales. We have um, reduced price because we're this little tiny warehouse in the middle of Amish country in Ohio, mm-hmm. and uh, we've got to make way for the new books. Right. So they sit in our warehouse and collect dust, and we don't want that to happen. Yep. There's, and well, they thousands, don't collect dust for long. No, they don't. They get out of here. Yeah, they there's do. thousands and thousands of them. Yes, but, but they go pretty yeah. quick. Joel, do we have any other questions? We did have a couple about, which you, I think you answered about the categories, selecting categories, and then um, if there's a book that they don't want to receive in a certain category, um, can they swap a book or anything like that if you want to address that? Okay, so just again, um, you choose your category. Um, they will, um, you would contact our sales department, um, or if you know who's been contacting you, or maybe you have an email in your in your box, um, contact that um person by email or by phone, and we'll help you choose your category. You choose what you want, and then they'll get it set up, and then they will. you'll get an email every month that says, these books are coming, and you can switch them out then, or you can um, even, some people even know, they look ahead, wait six months right. ahead, and go ahead and do their switches, um, whereas other people um, just say, we know you guys are doing the right thing. <laughs> just, yeah. Thank you. And so, oh, you can get processing. 
Mm -hmm. You can um, download your MART records. And because these books come out so early, you can even downhold place, um, placeholders and standard. Um, in, your, in your circulation catalog so you don't order it again. Right. It'll be there waiting for you. And all of our books are AR. So all of our books will eventually be AR. A lot of times since they're first edition books, the quizzes aren't available at a, when you first get them, but they do eventually yep. show up. And we guarantee the binding. Most are, yep. are, are free the shipping. Best binding, free shipping. So, yeah. Any other questions? We know you have so many things to do. Run to your yes, phone if, and if, order. Yes. If, go ahead. Run to your phone and order JLG and say Deb sent you Deb and Betty Ann. Absolutely. If you think of a question, uh, go ahead and send that in. Um, get in touch with your rep, or uh, you can check online. And just want to thank everyone for their time, for all their questions. Um, and again, thanks for joining us. We will see you next time at our next uh, webcast, and happy reading.